Hello and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. I am George. Today we are going to magnetize the Night Armager. It's a pretty cool looking kit. I'm really happy I got it. But I've gotten to the place in the assembly process where I have to decide whether my model is going to be the ranged variant or the assault variant. And I refuse to choose. So I've gotten to that part of the build process where I have to decide how I'm going to magnetize my model and specifically what parts. Thankfully this one isn't going to be such an involved process. I basically just have to uh, figure out a way to do a weapon swap. There are other things you could probably magnetize but eh, they don't really make as much impact. For example. You see those leg armor panels? One of these is for the uh, assault variant. The other slightly different armor panel is for the ranged variant. So if I wanted to be completely faithful, I could magnetize these armor panels and store them somewhere for like the rest of my life. And ugh. now, same thing with these little armor panels in front of the legs, or the feet. The range variant has one. The assault variant has another. The same thing could be said for the heads. But those changes are basically just cosmetic and they're finicky and they're gonna add to your they're going to add to your the work that you have to do, but they're not going to add a ton of fle tactical flexibility. There's another piece that I could potentially magnetize, but it seems like it's going to be a pain in the butt. Let me see. And it's this top-mounted weapon, so it's on top of this head assembly, and basically it's a long-barreled kind of rifle thing. Um, you can attach little bits here and there. Nah, why? That seems like an awful lot of bang for not a lot of buck. Wait, scratch that, reverse it. You know what I mean. So, we're just gonna do the primary armaments, the arms. And the trick to the arms is right here on this shoulder assembly. This uh, attaches to the head, kind of like so, and can swivel, and I believe the weapons themselves can rotate. Um, so I have to find a way of getting the gun mounts here and the chainsword mounts here, and it should be fairly straightforward because, as you can see, there's this little grommet right there where the pieces kind of attach around it and swivel around, so I'm not going to glue them the, the weapons together uh, once I attach it to this little grommet thing. I'm going to glue them together separately and then I'm going to shave this off, magnetize it, and I'll still have that spinny and I'll still have this swivel and all will be right with the world. Armed with my primary principle of magnetization, which is always use the biggest magnet you have, let's get started. Let's start with these guys, the Armager Auto Cannons. They're the ranged weapons, and the uh, Armager Helvrin has two of these, uh, plus a carapace mounted weapon that goes up here. But for now, we'll focus on just these. And so you'll see how they snap to the central piece, right? So the central piece attaches what it looks like, I guess, a, maybe a pencil the weapon and so the, this is the attachment point right here the central cylinder so this is what we're going to magnetize and we're going to do so before we glue anything together because we have to figure out a way to make this connection not be permanent and the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to start with a little bit of this stuff this is some milliput 
that I've, uh, it's two port epoxy that I've mixed together. And I'm just gonna jam a bit of it, this in here. To give myself a really nice place to sink a magnet. So you'll see there, there's that hole right there. And so when that hardens, it'll give me a nice place to put a magnet. Uh, without worrying about it kind of um, slipping into this hollow piece of the gun. And so, since it is three-dimensional, I need to change this up a bit. All right, so it'll be kind of like so. It'll fit kind of like so. And I'll make sure to stuff all that in there. So let's do some gluing now that I have a good idea. And now I want to push this epoxy, before it hardens, I want to push it kind of in there. I want a relatively flat surface where I can sink my magnet. But I'm not going to sink the magnet until this hardens up a little bit. I don't want it to set 100%. I want it to set maybe 75% so I can put a magnet in there and not worry about this falling in to the hollow of the weapon. And we'll do this to both of these weapons. Here is the Thermal Spear. It's a melta weapon for the Armager. Um, it's the Warglaive variant, I believe. Because the Helverin uses two of these and you two of these only. You'll notice that they're very, very similar. Their weapons basically came in two halves split vertically and there's a little glob of milliput right in the middle where the magnet's going to go and so the construction of these two weapons is very very similar and here is the armager chain cleaver looks nice and beefy and it is similar to the other weapons but it's a little different you'll notice that there is no hole on the top of this weapon and that's because it's actually attached this is the component that attaches to that uh, other piece that we we're talking about and so this is where I will sink in that milliput and once that's done I can glue these together and now my chainsaw will be able to go up and down that's actually really neat if I manage to do this right you'll you notice that conduit that goes into the weapon it actually goes inside the weapon so it allows you freedom to move it up and down I think that is a really neat touch so let's get this milliput going so fairly similar but slightly different before it dries we want to smoosh it in much as we can, clean out these edges, put it back in the middle there, clean it up a little bit so it doesn't look so crusty. Now I'm going to let that set and then I'll sink some magnets in there. Let's talk magnet selection. Here is my magnet library. We're going to find a size that could work. This looks promising. They're just a little too big. Bingo! These are disc magnets four millimeters by two millimeters and I can probably just use one so I've sunk that in to the milliput I want to make sure it's nice and flush and that should do it I'll do the same thing with all of these guys, making sure that the polarity is correct. You notice to push these in, I'm using these ceramic tip tweezers. They are really, really handy for magnetization jobs. 
Man, that is such a beautiful fit. It fits perfectly, that four millimeter magnet. Mm. Chef's kiss. You wanna make sure to apply enough pressure to push the magnet in gradually, but not enough pressure to sink it all the way through. It's a nice little, uh, uh, it's a balancing act, and uh, you'll get better with it with practice, but even if you have done a bunch of these, you'll still occasionally miss, and that's okay. You can always fix that. Before I leave this, I want to make sure to give myself an indicator of which side is which, which you know what the polarity orientation is for my stack of magnets. And so I've got these little magnets to just stick on the tail. These stick here, sticks, sticks, sticks. So I've tested them out. I know that the polarity is the same on all the weapons. That's exactly what I want because when I do the other side of this thing, the yeah. This cylinder, which I haven't gotten to yet, I'm going to sink the magnet in here by flipping the polarity over and pushing it in that way. So, keep it together. For the other side of the equation, the um, the connector, uh, we're going to start with some selective destruction. This disc right here is meant to be inside the weapon when you glue around this disc, uh, which means that it's not going to show up, and this is going to be protruding out of the weapon, which means we did we have to get rid of this entire uh, bit of it so that we can get the magnet in there. And so, let's start uh, that flue. All right, now that we've cut that disc off, let's smooth this out a little bit. We don't want it to look gross after all. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Now, we want to make some hole, we want to make a hole in here because we want to sink a magnet the very same size that should be nice uh, so we want to drill a four millimeter hole uh, into this piece right here um, but we're going to start off by drilling some guide holes and we'll increase the the diameter of the drill bit until we get to the four uh, because we don't want to destroy the cylinder and if we start from a four uh, right from the get-go uh, there's a good chance that it's gonna the drill bit's gonna slide or you're gonna you know maybe break through the piece no no we want to make sure that we do this right so let's start with a guide hole right in the middle right about there. All right, I think I'm done. Before I move on to the testing phase, I'm going to put away my magnets so that I don't get them mixed up. And they go right back into the magnet library. That's done. Now we get to check. So here are the weapons. We've got this melt a gun thing. We've got this cleaver thing, and we've got one of these uh, auto cannon, auto gun things. And so I want to make sure that they work. You'll notice that I still have this little cylinder. I have not attached the the piece that's going to attach it to the carapace, to the, to the body of the model. Um, I haven't attached it yet because I want to work with this uh, cylinder kind of by itself um, so that I don't have any mix-ups or if I do have any mix-ups it's easier to fix so let's test it out there we go it does the swivel and so if I was go going to attach it to the model it is ready to go Let me test out a few more All right, so they all work, and 
I have all four of those cylinders because you're going to have two models in this kit. So you have two cylinders per model. I want to make sure that they all work. And there we go. We're all set with this phase of the magnetization. Let's see what it looks like. Oh man, would you look at these mamma jammas? They're pretty big and they're pretty magnetized. Oh yeah. Uh, so here we have the assault version, and it's got the that uh, Melta cannon thing, and it's got the uh, cleaver thing, which is nice. This guy is the ranged version, all nice and built up. And he's got the auto cannons here, which look pretty amazing on him. And the magnetization is visible right here. Just like that, you can swap weapons, and if you do it right, with all the magnets and all the polarities accounted for, any weapon can go on any arm mount because you did the job correctly. Um, that's really all there is to magnetizing the um, uh, Imperial Armagers, Imperial Knight Armagers. Uh, there, it's a really, really cool kit. I had a blast building it, and it was actually fairly straightforward to magnetize it. Um, yes, you could technically magnetize this top kind of carapace turret. Um, so I went with the um, Melta gun variant, but if you use the stubber it doesn't matter. No one's going to call you on on this. Um, you can also magnetize the faces. You can magnetize the armor plates um, and the shoulder pads. But if you do that, you're going to end up with a ton of pieces. As it stands, I've only got an extra four weapons to paint and store somewhere. If you go with all these, including the variants, because there's some there's some boxes and some things you can treat off, you're going to end up with a bunch of spare parts, and it's not really that much of that. It's not really that much of a, of a valuable conversion. Um, really, don't bother with it. Um, but absolutely, unless you know for a fact that you're always going to run the uh, assault variant or that you're always going to run the uh, range variant then uh, this project is a very worthwhile thing to do, and it's pretty easy, I gotta say. I took care of this in just a few hours, um, including all the build time. So yeah, give it a shot, why don't you? After seeing me do this, I hope you are confident enough to try it on your own. If you have a, a, if you have a set of armagers or are planning to get some, um, it's a fun project. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace.